This is by far my most expensive boot ever, but look at that. So this is called a Summon Gum Burl. Very unique name and certainly a very unique look. Let me know down below in the comments how much you think I paid for this burl. Don't think about it too crazy, it wasn't like in the thousands or even in many hundreds. But considering how much I normally pay for a burl, this was definitely the most expensive. And don't cheat, I will let you know at the end, but let's have a guess. So as you saw just a few steps before I mounted the piece with a warm screw. And to be fair, I absolutely hate this method. I don't feel safe, but because of the rough front surface, um, that was kind of my one of my best options to do. But yeah, I regretted doing that. Um, I should have come up with a better way. It just doesn't feel very safe turning with a single warm screw, especially it, it couldn't fully go into the into the boot. So yeah, next time I will definitely do something else. So this front side will be the bottom of the ball and here I'm making the mortise for the chuck and um, yeah at this point I felt I screwed up a little bit because I made the mortise slightly bit too big uh, in order to fit into my um, chuck. I was slightly nervous as well turning this wood just because, because of the price range but also it looks so nice and I didn't want to screw up. Um, but I nearly did. But eventually I was able to put this on a chuck and it seemed to have a good holding strength and ready to turn. Turning this piece took a real toll on my tools. Again, it is rock solid and I will show in a, in a few steps later but I found some sort of crystals or some sort of stones inside which again, it doesn't really help um, any working tools, but very, very interesting um, materials. And let me know in the comments if you know what it is, but it seemed to have in every single void. And yeah, it has a texture like, like a crystal, a very stony. So yeah, it's weird. Salmon burrs are very similar to molly burrs which I normally use in my project. Both originated from, from Australia and they part of the, the eucalyptus. 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 Jokes aside, it was a hard word to pronounce and I had to go and search on Google Translate for the best pronunciation. I really liked how the subwood kind of remained on the top and it has the lighter color compared to the base which has the, the more intense reddish color. Um, so I decided to keep kind of the live edge at the top and, and having the contrast between the bottom and the top where the light and the darker color uh, meet. I think it just gave the extra uniqueness to this piece so hopefully you also agree with me. It does look good. And my trusted steady rest can come again and support this piece and I'm just about to get another tool ready which you never seen before well probably I used it before on this channel but I definitely didn't include in any of my um, voiceover so it's probably a good time to kind of talk about this incredible um, accessory for this light which is a uh, Halloween tool this gives an additional support at the back end of your carving chisels and makes the hollowing any ball or, or vase or any sort of project a lot more enjoyable and easier as well to be fair because it just gives the, the additional balance right at the end where if you hold the tool just by your hands obviously that will, that will have an up and down movement as you're going inside a piece but this will eliminate um, some of the vibration as well so definitely makes um, following a piece a lot more easier. 
So this wood turning formation called holoform, which means it has a very narrow entrance from the top side. You won't see the inside when you hollow this piece. So you're really relying on your listening and looking at the piece, how it reacts as you go deeper. And obviously occasionally you can just um, pull the carving tool out and look in inside with a torch and just see how it goes um, but definitely gives um, a very different experience here i'm setting up the the laser um, which helps identify the wall thickness as long as you see the the red laser on the piece it means the wall thickness is still um, too thick on that side and as you work towards the outside eventually that little laser dot will fall onto the lathe that means you reach the desired wall thickness. It's extremely good tool. At certain point, you can see it disappears. It's just because I my, have my steady rest at the top, which kind of blocks the the laser. And then just swapping over to a carbide scraper, a run scraper because it would be very difficult to send on the inside I decided I would just try to scrape off some of the tool marks but obviously it will still have a, a rougher finish because I can't send it to a desired grid but, but the outside will be sent to a high grid so it still should look awesome As I mentioned at the beginning, when I mounted this onto my chuck, um, it had a good grip, but I wasn't super convinced it will stay there. So just in case, I'm bringing my uh, tailstock up to the piece, so that gives a little bit of additional support as it squeezes against the, the chuck a little bit more, so I can just remove some of the tool marks left on the outside before I can move on to sending this piece. And due to the uneven surface, it was a plenty, I shouldn't say, plenty of uh, hand sending. Eventually I was able to um, machine send a little bit the, the outside, but most of the sending was done to good old hand sending, all the way up to 320 grit. So I wanted to keep the traditional run kind of um, bottom for this uh, piece but I just didn't didn't really like how the, the bottom looked so I decided to move on to my usual uh, carved feet so here I'm making and getting the, the bottom side ready in order to mark out where the little feet will go and we can jump into and start carving the, the little feet here I'm using my center finder which is a brilliant tool to kind of uh, support marking out the three little feet and again it was a, a long process to to identify the, the the best position of the feet just because I had some loose piece and, and, and certain parts which I really wanted to carve out so it took me a little time to figure out exactly where the feet will go but eventually I succeeded. So as I said at the beginning, this was definitely my most expensive wood blank I have ever purchased and to reveal the price I paid £90 for this piece of blank which is around 100, 103 US dollars so definitely not the cheapest blank but again it has so much characteristics and, um, and uniqueness so I believe well worth the money and the good news, I have another two blanks to utilize into future projects and now I'm thinking how I can introduce some resin as well so hopefully I can come up with a good idea how I can combine this incredible piece of material with some contemporary solution and using epoxy resin the other two blanks looks a little bit more plainish so I think I can really lift up with some bright colors
And here we are, send it up to 320 grits. We are ready to brand this little beauty. And are you ready? This is oiling time. And look at that. A little mineral oil will go a long way, popping the grain. It's stunning. Honestly, never seen a wood like this before. Obviously, I've seen it in, in different videos, but I never had a wood like this before. And some more pictures coming up right now. Thank you for watching and see you back next week.